Welcome to the People Priority Podcast, where we dig into topics that help you show up as your best self for you and your circle of influence. I'm your host, Julie Schneers, a teacher turned speaker, team culture consultant, and leadership growth coach who loves people. Join me every week for conversations that will motivate, educate, and hopefully just inspire you to grow through the power of communication, connection, and confidence. Because you and your people, you're worth it. Here we go. I'm super excited about this guest. It's Marcus Ogden. A little bio information about him. He was drafted into the NFL in 2003 as an offensive lineman. After five years of playing in league, he decided to retire and pursue a career in construction and contracting. At age 27, Marcus founded a construction company called the Caden Premier Enterprises. Now, the company had fast growth, but in 2010, it went bankrupt. This lost him almost $2 million on one project in a matter of 90 days. Now, during his darkest hours, he pulled himself together. He got a part-time job as a custodian and with hard work and determination, became the inspirational keynote speaker, executive coach, best-selling author, marketing leader that I know today. He helps others build their own success. I cannot wait to talk with my friends, my mentor, this incredible motivational person, Marcus Ogden. Marcus, thank you so much. How are you, Julie? Thanks for having me on. You doing okay? I'm good. I'm pumped about today. Okay, frame out for me. I know that I just shared your bio, but key pieces, frame out this change of life. How did you find the confidence to step forward? So in my new frame of life, what I'm doing today, when I lost everything at $400 to my name, and I was fired from two jobs, a Merrill Lynch job, all my fault, and a construction company where they shut down their sales store, I'm out of a job. So the only job I could get was a custodian making $8.25 an hour on the graveyard shift from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And what I realized, the framework of me building something special couldn't begin until I got out of my own way. And I stopped blaming others for mm. my faults, my issues, my shortcomings. Once I did that and I took full accountability and started to be responsible to others, my life got better. And after my rock bottom, that was the beginning of the framework for me. And I tell people all the time, opportunity is a chance to do and or create something great. And there's two things you need to do to really leverage that is number one, identify your why, because your why will push you through the days where things aren't going well. You say, well, who the hell am I? And right. leverage your strengths. What you do well is important because that's how you need to build and frame your next point of life. So that's what I did. And I figured I was a good storyteller. I was a good communicator. I wanted to help people. And that's when I launched my speaking business in 2013, September. But unfortunately, because I did build a framework of value to others, I got no paid speaking jobs for two and a half years. Finally got our first paid speaking job, April 2016, Miller Mott College in Wilmington, North Carolina. And then I got coached in 2018 through NAPSA program in the NFL. And after I got coached by NAPSA and I really started to elevate, we've worked for in the last seven years, 51 Fortune 500 brands. We just can high by 51st, which is Wells Fargo, wow. working for them sometime uh, either quarter two or quarter three. And we're in talk with people like Johnson & Johnson, wow. some other large opportunities. We have a podcast, you know. I do coaching, consulting, uh, and I'm really working hard to just help others. And our team works even harder to support me so we can go out and support others. I love that. Something that you said was, of course, supporting others was what made the difference. Oh, of course. You know, when you start a business, if you start with the value system of helping others and not worrying about the money, great things will come. So like our podcast, our new one, Get Authentic. We didn't start that to make money. And it's interesting. I'm going through a very life-changing, alterating situation, which you know very much about. And the podcast launched 
right around that time last year. Pass for me was very therapeutic just to get my own mind off all the crazies in my life, but also to interview amazing people to let them share their truth, their life, their words, their wisdoms. As a result of that, this is where and how we've gone now from starting when we're at the top 1% most popular podcast worldwide and we're closing in the top half percent and we're only like a thousand or so downloads away from 40,000 downloads of our show and we're only a little over nine months old. That is incredible. But Getting Authentic, your podcast, and you can find it anywhere where there are podcasts called Get Authentic. The heart of it is being real with people. How impactful is that? So tell me, where did you come up with the title of Get Authentic? How did you decide that that was going to be what others needed to hear from you about? So going through my life-changing hard experience that sure. just about wrapped, I realized that when I shared that with people, when they asked me how I'm doing, I was authentic with them, right? A lot of times they would then be authentic. Yeah, I say, well, how are you Absolutely. doing? I say, Wow. For, a, for example, I was talking to a guy yesterday, one of my clients, and I told him what I'm going through. He said, Marcus, wow, I have gone through that twice. Not once, twice. So what you're going, you share with me authentically, and he turned right back around, right, Julie, and share with me authentically his own story. Here's the thing. I've known Bill for at least two years. Yeah. At least years and until i share with him authentically yesterday he never shared with me authentically about his story so when i open up to him he opened up to me and i realized when starting to name that podcast back in like early it was like late may early june that when i was sharing people with what i was going through at the time it made people say yes marcus i've gone through something similar or i'm going through something at that time similar I said, wow, if more people are actually authentic with their stories and trying to help others, probably be a better place. So I said, what the hell? Launched it. Here we are. Here we are. And you know, when I speak, one of the tools in my signature three C's keynote is about asking and answering questions and being real with people. Basically, get authentic. And I had someone once tell me, well, that's unprofessional and I'm just not willing to do that. And of course, like to talk through that piece with people, but what words of wisdom would you say to business people or, you know, professionals or leaders in a space that they feel like they can't just be authentic? Here's the thing. Everybody has their issues, everyone. And if you're not willing to share your issues, right, then I feel that you're not real. Now, again, you don't have to tell me every last thing under the sun. Like I said, I'm, right. I'm talking about I'm going through a life-changing experience. I'm not saying what it is, how it came about. Like I don't have to go into the deep nitty-gritty or deep into the weeds to start getting you to feel sorry for me. That's not what authentic is. Authentic is just sharing with people your perspective, your truth to the level that you want to share that as long as it is genuine, real, and honest. That's it. And when you do that, people start to drop they're gone, right? Especially if you're talking about from a way of, hey, here's what I'm going through. How can you potentially help me? Or how can you potentially, you know, make me a better person? So some of my people in my network that are my clients know exactly what my situation is, you included. And they get advice, give me some guidance. They've been there for me in hard times. And at the end of the day, it's made me connect with people deeper. And here's the thing, right? Every business transaction is done with a experience of a human being running that decision. And I always talk to people all the time. Every business transaction starts casual conversation, period. Communication and connection. I have a, I have a saying, communication <laughs> creates connection. And then I say communication and connection creates a confidence confidence in you, a confidence that other people will have in you, right? So I love that you're saying the exact words that, of course, the podcast is about. So in the realm of communication and connection, two key words for what you talk about as well, give us communication tips 
and some relationship building connection tips that you think are most impactful? Communication tips. Be consistent in communicating with people. Follow up and make it a reciprocal communication style where people know that you're not just talking to them, trying to get them to buy what you want, or you're trying to dominate the conversation. It's got to be reciprocal, right? So always, always be consistent. Always, always follow up and always, always be a reciprocating individual. Now with relationships, right? Relationships are the old and the new currency. I love that. They are the ultimate end game. So what you need to do for relationship building, create your own influential network of people. Create those that you know something happens, you can go to them and they can help you out at that time. Now, here's the little tip I'm gonna give you, okay? You may not like this, but it's the truth. It takes time. So my clients, and I have all types of clients, coaching clients, consulting clients, one of my best friends is the COO of Weaver Popcorn. Get this audience, met him through LinkedIn in 2018. We built a relationship. He finally hired me for a company he was working for called Red. He hired me January of 2020. And then I worked with him again through consulting, right? Then he got let go from Red Gold because Red Gold just did not appreciate him, in my opinion, right? My opinion is all I can talk about. So from there, he went from Red Gold. Now he's at another company called Weaver Popcorn, right? Doing phenomenal. And he brought us in to do training, to do some webinars, to do some speaking. And he and I have been really great friends for the last now, what? Yeah, almost five years. And I, if I need something, I can go to him. But here's also the catch. Don't try to go to people and get favors or cash in favors too early. Because I also did that in 2014 with the guy that I just met. I tried to cash in too early and I burnt the relationship and that's all on me. So again, really build up strong relationships with people over time. And once you do that, It'll then manifest itself until you have what we call a very strong influential network. Yeah. Well, and of course, I love that you said time because that is the that's the hardest commodity to give sometimes. And I know in the business world, in today's world, we're like I say, we're a box checking society. Okay, I need this. I need you to move on. This is on my to do list. And so, giving things time, whether it's ourselves or our business or our relationships sometimes is a little bit hard. So do you have any tips on how to let time not take over? So what I will tell people is, it's something I need to do three things. Focus, lock in, and attack. Be okay. focused like a laser that can cut through a diamond, right? Coaching one have, one Right. Have a lock in with your target so you know what you're going after, and then attack right? Every single day. And don't get caught in what I call the day-to-day -day grind and minutia. You should embrace it. You should understand it's going to, going to be part of the process. Yeah. But don't get caught up in it. Because when you start getting caught up in it, you start saying, I haven't got anything to done today. Oh, it was such a long day. Oh, yeah. I got a beautiful day and nothing got done. Yeah. I tell clients that they're loving this. Focus on one thing at a time. It sounds really basic and very like first like first grade level, but I'll tell you what, including me, and I had to learn this myself in the last like 12 months since my thing started for me. If I try to focus on too many things, nothing mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Nothing. You know, Julie, I'm all at the finish line for my for my situation. If I had focused and locked in these last nine or so months, wow. I mean, I don't know where I'd be. Right, because I probably be in the same situation, put up with the same crap, being very, very just negative and very, very just like, oh, life stinks and all these and all that does it affects your life, it affects your business, it affects everything. So don't let time be your factor that pushes you away or you know just deters you from moving forward. Because again, you just gotta look at what's the end result you desire. One mm -hmm. focus on that everything else will start to work itself. That's a beautiful strategy for the day-to-day. 
and for busy, busy people, I think it's important that we have a focus. And like you said, finish, finish one project at a time. It does sound simple, but it's hard to do. It's hard to make yourself attack one thing at a time. Okay. So what about time and relationship building? So again, just be patient and don't worry about what the other person can do for you. Showing up when they need you, eventually over time, it will progress. It will manifest. It'll just blossom into them saying, well, how can I help you? How can I assist you? Mm -hmm. I never ever have a relationship where I'm like, hmm, what can a person do for me? Yeah. Never. Never. And that's how it should be. But in the working world, when you hire someone, I think if we're going to flip relationship building into the working world, that's hard because you think, well, I hired this person for this job, but the reality still is the relationship building is going to make them do a better job. So I understand the idea if you're listening and you're thinking, okay, but fine in my life with my friends, with connections that I've met on LinkedIn, I loved your story there. Sure, relationships there. But I still think this applies in the workspace a little bit. Yeah, we're going to need to work towards what the job description is, but building those relationships so that there's loyalty and retention and investment. What about that? You have any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> like, one, so my business partner, her name is Dawn. Dawn's phenomenal. Yesterday, she told me that she was not going to be coming to the work at the house as normal, she comes over every Thursday and really crush what we have on the, on the plate. And she told me that she wasn't gonna come over. I said, not a problem. So what happened? I sent her some stuff the day before that I needed for her to do for work out so later on or by next week, no rush, right? At 5 a.m. that morning, yesterday morning, I had everything I needed sent to me by Dawn. And mm -hmm. here's the whole factor. Dawn and I are great and we're best friends and it's really awesome. And we have a great relationship. And as a result of that, she works hard for me all the time, early mornings, late evenings. It doesn't matter. Like for example, she booked me a flight to go to Palm beach in two weeks. She said, Hey, I'm at work right now. Can I book it at night? Not a problem, Dawn. Did the same thing. There, made, there was a mistake made with something we need for marketing material. I sent a picture to her. She said, hey, I get to play tonight. No problem, Dawn. Absolutely. Seven o'clock that night, bam, I had a thing, you know, fixed and re-ready to done and done and ready to go. So the point I'm making is, right, Julie, is that relationship building applies in business because just because you hire someone doesn't mean they're gonna work the extra mile for you. And they probably won't do it if they don't like you. If they like you, they'll do it all day, after hours, first thing in the morning, first thing at night. They'll get it done. Dawn is like that on our team. George, our website developer and SEL specialist. Albert, our trademark and patent specialist. Everybody that works for us on our team, you know, our social media team, Paige and Kylie Social, our videographer, Donovan, our video editor, you know, Donata. I don't have to baby these people, but everybody likes me and I like everybody. And so because of that, I don't have to ever worry about work not getting done or work getting done at a certain time between certain hours because they like me, I like them, they'll get it done no matter when or what time it is because they like me, I like them, we have a great relationship and they want to see me win and I want to see them win too. I love that. I love your words of wisdom. So working with a team, the power of relationships, the power of good communication. I want to, I want to go back for just like our last little piece and think about your time in the NFL. Okay. Or time in football in general. When you think about the coaches that coached you along your path, I would love to hear a really good communication and connection example from a coach and or a bad one. Because I just, I love digging into the coaching realm and your NFL background. So without a doubt, my rookie year, when Jack Derry, our rookie head coach, he was actually a rookie himself as a head coach, told us in light, you have to be your own CEO. That was everything for me because I still use that in my work today and I will to the day I die because mm -hmm. Jack set a precipice for me to understand it. 
that being your own CEO is not just about football, it's about life. So hearing those words as a 22-year-old rookie, think I'm 42 now, and I'll never forget those words as long as I live, period. So again, Jack telling me as a 22-year-old rookie, he was a rookie head coach himself, he was talking to our entire draft class. He said, fellas, if you want to be successful in life, be your own CEO. Yes, you went to the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you are your own brand. You're your own individual. And I understand what Jeff Bezos told me is branding is what people say about you when you're not in the game. Mm, that's so good. I love that. Okay, so as we kind of come to a close, I would love to think about everything we talked about today. What are three key takeaways that you hope the audience hears from you today? Number one, build relationships with people that are winners, to surround yourself with winners. Number two, communicate consistently and create connection with people. And third, get others around you that can coach and or mentor you because without mentorship and or coaching and or guidance, you will not reach your optimal level. It's just not possible. Every successful person I know, athlete, business leader, business owner, whoever has a coach. Yeah, I love that. And I totally agree. What about a challenge? Marcus Ogden, give our audience a challenge for the week. I'm going to challenge everybody to build deeper relationships, make the effort with people that you work with. Just try it. Be empathetic, be compassionate, be authentic, be vulnerable, and see how far it gets you. I promise you, you will be pleasantly surprised. I love that. I love that. Okay, wrapping it up with a quote for us to walk away with, and you've given us some good quotes from coaches, but do you have a quote that you love or hold on to that you would share with us? In times of extreme darkness, Focus on the light, Aristotle. What I think he meant was the light is truth. So in times of darkness, which is lies, deceit, jealousy, wrath, envy, be the positive light. Mm. Be the truth light to help others get what they need through shining your light to help others see their path and where to go. These are such good nuggets. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh, this is a blast. And of course, thank you, Marcus. But he has his own incredible podcast that I would love for you to kind of tune into. It's Get Authentic. You can also follow him on every social media platform. And I challenge you to follow him because these words of wisdom that he gave us today, he's always giving out in his podcast and on social media. Marcus, you're amazing. Thanks for listening and being my people. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hook me up with a five-star review wherever you're listening right now. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the People Priority Podcast. So you don't miss out on more tips, tricks, and important reminders. All right, I'll see you next week.